Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Effective and Ineffective Leaders. This is Lecture A, Effective Leaders. The objectives for this unit, Effective and Ineffective Leaders, are to describe the common traits of effective leaders, describe skills needed in order for HIT leaders to be effective, Describe the common traits of ineffective leaders. Distinguish between demotivating and motivating leaders. Discuss ineffective leadership's role on stress in the work environment. So, what makes a leader effective? As you can imagine, a lot has been written about what qualities a leader must have in order to be effective. Most authors will note that capable leaders have the ability to move beyond the status quo. They also have the ability to challenge conventional wisdom. In the healthcare industry, maintaining the status quo worked for years. But the healthcare and the IT landscapes are changing at such a rapid pace, this is not an option anymore. The meaningful use incentives offered under the High Tech Act will force most organizational leaders to re-examine how they manage their operations. Most health systems are in the process of reviewing their IT infrastructure. Changing from an in-house based software program to a cloud-based or software as a service model will require not only technical change but infrastructure and personnel change. In the future an organization may have to determine how it will integrate genetic data into its EHRs or examine whether or not it is ready to take on pay-for-performance measures. These changes will require that healthcare IT leaders have an arsenal of skills with them, both visionary and tactical. It will also mean that we'll need to learn from mistakes of the past. It is easy to speak in terms of what makes an effective leader. Anyone who has worked for great leaders can name the characteristics that distinguish them from an ordinary leader. Inevitably, a pattern of common characteristics will emerge, like the best leaders are emotionally stable, trustworthy, and inspire action. There have been many changes in the healthcare landscape in recent decades. These changes have focused more and more on healthcare providers delivering quality care to patients rather than simply increasing the volume of services they provide. We've also gone from episodic visits documented on crude, non standardized charts to hundreds of thousands of paper charts to electronic documentation. We've also gone from the single system databases that were fairly easy to manage to having to determine ways to store genetic information about patients. There are approximately 24,000 genes in each human being. We have just begun to see the complexities that will follow with managing that volume of data elements. Healthcare has always been a 24 7 business. But we're now facing global pressures of medical tourism, which is when people seek medical care in other countries. This has led to disease-resistant strains of viruses from other countries, as well as our own homegrown variety. What all this means to the healthcare IT leader is that the old ways of managing won't work anymore. The landscape has changed, grown more complex, and your patients have access to almost as much information as you do. As a leader, you must ask yourself how you can effectively manage everything in your daily operational environment and still keep an eye on what's coming down the road. From a technology management perspective, we have come a long way from the techno-geek image that used to dominate the IT industry. In past years, it was not uncommon for a perfectly well-meaning and highly skilled programmer to unveil a piece of technology that he expected the clinical staff to devour. But it rarely happened that way. The technology may have been advanced and superlative, but 
If it didn't mirror or support the way physicians practice medicine and interacted with patients, it would not be accepted. Over the course of the past decade, the healthcare technical staff started emulating other successful leaders. They came to realize that if they did not understand the business of healthcare, nothing they developed, purchased or fixed, would be perceived as valuable. They realize that technology is certainly an enabler, but it's only 20% of the problem in an implementation. Plugging a server into the wall is the easy part. It's managing the feelings, opinions, and decisions surrounding the use of that server that constitutes nearly all of the remaining 80% of the time of most IT leaders. As implementation and healthcare IT leaders, we can only be effective if we understand the business we're in. The soft skills a healthcare IT leader must have include knowing how to manage change and persuading audiences of the value of IT. Encouraging people to change their behaviors or their mindsets is not easily accomplished and requires a good ear and lots of patience. It also requires that leaders be persuasive, but not aggressive. The last soft skill, being a good listener, applies to leaders across the board. In healthcare IT, it means listening to a multitude of different stakeholders, from physicians to nurses to administrators to patients to your own IT staff. Each group needs to know that you are truly listening to them and trying to understand their pain points and problems. Technically proficient IT personnel, who are also good communicators, are difficult to come by. There will be many things about the addition of new technology into an organization that need to be carefully explained so that other organizational leaders and partners understand the implications of their decisions surrounding technology purchases. Effective leaders have learned to master the art of taking a very complicated technical topic and doing the analysis for their counterparts in the organization. Part of our job as healthcare IT leaders will be to act as the translator between the clinical, administrative, and technical staffs of our organizations. Being able to persuade an organization to make data-driven decisions instead of reactionary decisions will require careful understanding of both the technology and the business of healthcare. Finally, we'll close with an examination of three traits of effective leaders, excerpted from an article by Dan McCarthy, entitled, The Top Ten Challenges of the New Leader. Most of these lessons are not in the leadership books because they show the less glamorous side of leading and are tough lessons for the new leader to learn. The first lesson is understanding that not everyone will want to be led, and not everyone will want to be led by you. This is a bit of reality that's good to understand at the beginning of one's leadership career. It's not personal, and there are many reasons for this first point. Some people simply do not see themselves as followers. Some think they should be the leader, and some are simply withholding approval. The point is that leaders must earn the respect of the people they're leading. Having a title bestows nothing. The second lesson is that there is no road map telling you the best way to lead an organization or team or office. There is a quote in the article by McCarthy that says, The most important part of your job is probably not in your job description. This means that you have to get your entire team to the finish line and across hurdles and obstacles. But it's your job. The successful leader will be unyielding in getting to that finish line. Finally, the new leader would do well to remember the parable of the scorpion and the frog. As described in Wikipedia, the story is about a scorpion asking a frog to carry him across a river. The frog is afraid of being stung, but the scorpion reassures him that if he stings, the frog would sink, and the scorpion would drown as well. The frog then agrees. Nevertheless, in mid-river, the scorpion stings him, dooming them both. 
When asked why, the scorpion explains, I'm a scorpion. It's my nature. Being socially aware and observant about how individuals behave is a very important skill to learn for any leader, but especially for the new leader. If individuals appear to be bossy or unmanageable, you may need extra help in handling them in tough situations. Similarly, if an individual has a habit of missing deadlines or doing subpar work, you may want to rely on past experience rather than giving him or her a chance and running the risk of failure. Remember that it is nearly impossible to both lead a project and change individual behavior at the same time. For the sake of meeting a deadline or accomplishing a goal, you often must choose which one you're able to do successfully. This concludes Lecture A, Effective and Ineffective Leaders. In summary, being an effective leader uses up a lot of energy. Leaders often work long, stressful hours, and it's essential that they take care of themselves and avoid exhaustion. An unenergetic leader's message could be lost or misinterpreted. Effective leadership also requires observation of individual and group behavior. Make notes of patterns in behavior when they occur, and the triggers that cause them. After three projects or so, the patterns will become familiar and you'll be able to spot them sooner. Finally, being an effective leader requires the study of human behavior as well as your subject matter. One without the other is not enough.